Bruce, Jason here, and I'm <coughs> going to present Unit 11 on electric current, resistance, and DC circuits. At the beginning here in Lesson 1, we're going to study electric potential energy and potential difference. We're going to talk about also voltage and the idea of electric current. <coughs> so we begin with electric potential energy. Now this is a setup here that we're kind of familiar with now. We've talked about electric fields. And we know that when we have the charges lined up on a metal plate, metal plates opposite each other, we get a uniform electric field. So we get nice straight electric field lines. And we've learned uh, how to calculate the force on a charge that is in one of those electric fields by simply multiplying the charge by the electric field. And that tells us the force that's being exerted on the charged particle. Now we're going to talk about the idea of work. And if you think back to mechanics, first we, we talked about force, and then in the next chapter we went on to talk about work. We just learned that work is equal to force times distance. So we're going to apply that same concept to charged particles. After all, particles are just little pieces of matter. They have mass, and so force is being exerted on them, and that force can act over a distance, and therefore <coughs> the work <coughs> that is done on a charged particle is equal to the force exerted on it, multiplied by the distance. And of course, remember, we also have that idea uh, in work of the cosine of theta. In this situation, however, notice that the, the charged particles are going to travel directly in line with the force. So the force that's exerted on them is going to push them in a direction that is uh, parallel to the field's lines of force. And so we're not going to need a, a cosine of theta when we talk about the work. So it's simply the force times the distance. And remember, force is equal to the charge times the electric field. That's QE. So simply, a QED is going to tell us how much work can be done on a charged particle. Um, so I'm going to make an analogy in a second to the idea of this being similar to the idea of potential uh, energy with gravity. But let me go ahead just to talk uh, about the next idea here, which is uh, electric potential energy difference. And that simply means the difference in potential energies at two places, and of course, it's the idea of the change in the potential energy. And we know that change always means what is something when you finish minus what is something when you started. So here you're just looking at the <coughs> charged particle in two points, point A and point B. Here at point B is where it finishes, and it has a low amount of potential energy. And here at point A is where it starts and has a high amount of potential energy. So when you do point A, or potential energy at point B, which is small, minus potential energy at point A, which is larger, you get negative uh, potential energy. And so negative, negative of QED. It's the negative of the work that is being done. Uh, and if you think about this, uh, the idea here is when you're at point A, you have a lot of potential energy. When you're at point B, you've lost that potential energy, and of course, what has it been turned into? Can turn into kinetic energy because the particle will be moving faster as it moves along these lines. So energy has been put into the particle, but in the process it has lost potential energy. And what we're really looking at here is the loss of the potential energy. So as much energy as it gains in work, which is Q times E times D, that's how much energy it loses in potential energy. So that's why the negative sign is the same formula, it's just the negative sign showing you that the the potential energy has gotten less as the kinetic energy has gotten more. Now, I said that this was kind of analogous to gravity. When we talk about potential energy in gravity, we have mass times gravity times height, mgh, tells us how much potential energy an object has when it's up in the air. And then as it falls and hits the ground, it you know has less potential energy. And of course, the heavier an object is, the more potential energy it has, mgh. And over here, same idea. The more charge an object has, the more uh, potential energy, elect electrical potential energy it's going to have, because more force will be acting on it in this field. And so your Q is larger, and so Q times E times D is larger for 2Q than it is for 1Q. So this 2Q will have more electric potential energy. But the idea is still the same. Uh, you could like turn this uh, sideways and think about it. Uh, I don't think I can do that easily, but uh, if we turn this thing sideways, just think about it like gravity. You know, here's here's the ground. Here you are up in the air. And what's going to happen? You're going to be pushed. You're going to go from the ground or from the air down to the ground. Here it's happening because of gravity. 
here it's happening because of electrical force. But it's the same idea. You know, the, the, the uh, closer you are to the positive sign, the more force is acting on you. And um, so it's kind of analogous to, um, to gravity in that sense. So the further, the further distance you have to travel from one plate to the other, the more potential energy you're going to lose. All right, so um, this is the formula for electrostatic uh, potential energy. And down here you have a definition of a potential energy associated with a charge due to its position in an electric field. The right? potential energy of gravity is due to your position in a gravity field. So here's a little particle, a little positive particle, traveling along here in an electric field. So it's going to have more potential energy here as it travels along the field, but then as it gets closer down to the plate at the other end, it's got it's gaining speed, which means it's gaining kinetic energy, but losing potential energy. <coughs> so it has more potential energy here than it does here, which again is the, the reason for the negative sign in this formula. The potential energy of electricity is going to increase if the charge is negative, because everything will be opposite with a negative charge. If, if this were a negative charge, then it would be hard to get it to go from A to B. In other words, uh, remember a negative charge would naturally move the opposite direction of the atoms. So if you wanted to move a negative charge from A to B, you would have to do work on it. You would have to push it to get it to go to B. And so, you know, you would uh, have the negative of QED. So in this formula here, I want to point out, it is important to put the sign on the charge. If you have a negative charge, you put a negative sign here, so that you have two negatives in a row and it turns the turns the answer positive. So I know I've said before on Coulomb's law, you don't need to put the positives or negatives into the charge. In this formula, we do. All right, now let's talk about electrostatic potential energy and potential difference. This is where we get into something we're all familiar with, a word, volt, that we're all familiar with, but what is it actually? So electric potential. Now, notice this is called electric potential. Um, it's not the same as electric potential energy, and I'm sorry they sound so much alike. This one just stops at two words, electric potential. Okay, so it's different than electrostatic potential energy, which is what we just talked about. That's the energy that something has because it's in the electric field. Electric potential has a specific definition, and it's defined as the amount of potential energy that a charge has at a specific point in the electric field, such as point A, divided by the charge. So that's energy divided by charge. So in other words, that's joules of energy divided by coulombs of charge. That's what a volt is. It's one joule per coulomb. So um, as a one coulomb charge moves through a potential difference of one volt, the charge gains one joule of energy. That's what a, a volt is, one joule of energy per coulomb of charge. Okay, only changes in potential can be measured allowing for reassignment of V equals zero. As in potential energy, remember, you always need to have a reference point. So on those plates that we just looked at, those two charged plates in the electric field, um, you know, you have point A and a point B. So we, we would uh, select uh, a certain point to be our zero point. So if we consider like this to be the ground, you know, when it reaches the other plate, uh, that would be the, that could be a point we use for zero. But in problems where you where you're dealing with potential energy, you can choose any point you want to be the zero point, and uh, and then you would just use that as your zero in your calculations. Okay, so we'll see a few calculations shortly. Um, so voltage potential difference. Right, so we just defined voltage as being the potential energy. Of a, of a charge at a certain point in the field, a certain place in the field, divided by the charge itself, joules per coulomb. Now we talk about potential difference. And that is the difference in two voltages at two different places in the field. So that's equal to the voltage at point B minus the voltage at point A. Again, this is really call, talking about the change in electric potential. So it's the, it's the voltage at the finishing point minus the voltage at the starting point. Well, so what does that equal? Well, it's the potential energy at point B minus the potential energy at point A divided by the charge. So 
we're still talking about voltage. Joules on top and coulombs on the bottom. Do this for coulombs. And this works out to be the negative of the work done in moving the charge from B to A divided by Q. Remember, um, in going from, look at this little picture here. Right? Think about the work done. This charge is positive. So in going from A to B, it uh, finishes at A, it starts at B. In going from A to B, the work done is going to be um, positive because the field is pushing the charge, so it's exerting a force on the charge, in the direction that it's moving. So the work done on it is going to be positive. But we talked about the potential energy change being negative because it loses potential energy. So in going from point A to point B, it gains kinetic energy, which means that positive work was done on it, but it loses kinetic energy, or it loses potential energy. And that's what this formula was about, and that's why we said the negative sign was in there. So when we get to this formula here, there's another negative in here. The work that was done, which is going to be positive, has to have a negative sign put in front of it in order to change it into um, the change in potential energy from A to B. I know, we'll just keep going. Let's take, let's take a look at a couple of these formulas in action and um, <clears throat> see how we do. So as a particle moves 10 meters along an electric field of strength 75 newtons per coulomb, right? So the particle's going, we've got the E field strength, that's capital E right there, 75 newtons per coulomb. Its electric potential energy decreases by 4.8 times 10 to the negative 16 joules. What's the particle's charge? All right. So what do we know? First of all, the distance that it moves is 10 meters. That's how far it moves. The electric field strength is 75 newtons per coulomb. Now, we're looking for the change in its potential energy. So that's the potential energy when it's done moving minus the potential energy when it started. And they told us that that went down. It decreased by this amount. So in other words, it's negative. So the potential energy change is negative. Right. So just going back now to the basic formula we started with for potential energy. The change in potential energy of the electricity is equal to negative Q E D. So it's equal to negative times Q, the charge, which is what we're looking for, times uh, the 75 newtons per coulomb times the distance D. I went, and since I'm looking for Q, I solved this. I just solved it for Q. So Q is equal to the change in potential energy divided by negative electric field times distance. And so I simply plugged in those numbers and found out that Q was a positive charge of 6.4 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. All right, what is the potential difference between the initial and final locations of the particle in problem one? Now we're talking about potential difference. Notice the two words, potential difference, not the three words, electric potential energy, right? They're different things. So here we're talking about potential difference. We're talking voltage. So what is our uh, formula for voltage, right? So the, the change in voltage is equal to the change in potential energy divided by charge. Okay, remember, voltage is defined as the potential energy at a certain point, like point A, divided by the charge. Well, the change would be, you'd have to be talking about two different places. So the change is equal to the change in potential energy, which is the potential energy you know, at the finishing point minus the potential energy at the beginning point, A, divided by the charge. Well, in this problem that they're referring to, they already told us the change in the potential energy. So this here is delta VE, right? Change, negative 4.8. So I've got that number already on top. And the charge from the previous problem that we found at the end was 6.4 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. So I have put that into the formula, right? And I have found that there is a negative 750 volt <clears throat> potential difference. Okay. An electron moves 4.5 meters in the direction of an electric field of strength 325 newtons per coulomb to determine the change in electric potential energy. Well, if you move in the direction of the field, that means what they mean by that in the direction of, they mean that it moves in the direction the arrows are pointing. Remember, for an electron to do that, an electron doesn't want to move that way, it wants to move the other way. So in order for it to do that, something has to, some force has to be put on it to make it move in that direction. Okay, but the question is determine the change in electric potential energy. So first off, we need to know the charge on an electron, which is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. 
and we're still looking at the same formula for the change of potential energy, okay? That change in electric potential energy is what's asked for. So that's negative times the charge times E times D. So look here, this is what I was saying before. Negative is part of the formula. When you put the charge into the formula, if it's a negative charge, like there is on an electron, you have to put another negative sign. So Q in this formula, you must put positive or negative, depending on the charge. Then E is given as 325, and the direction, uh, the distance is 4.5. Okay, so putting all these in, we find that the change in electric potential energy is positive. Okay, so what does that mean? It means it's got more energy when it's finished uh, than it did when it started. More what kind of energy? Not kinetic more potential energy. So you put work into it, you put energy into it, uh, potential energy into it by moving it against the direction that it wanted to go. So it's got more potential energy when it's finished. I'm saying it's like lifting a rock into the air. You know, the rock doesn't want to go into the air. You have to push it up into the air. You're adding potential energy to it. So when an electron moves in the direction of an electric field, which is not the direction it wants to move, you are adding potential energy to it. So that's why we got a positive answer. All right, you can read this through and try this. Let's take a look at this example here. We have an electron in the picture tube. You, you don't know what picture tubes are because they don't make them anymore in televisions. Um, but, you know, again, it's just these two plates. One's positively charged, one's negatively charged, and there's an electric field between them. Okay. So what's going to be the change in the electric potential energy of the electron? All right, well, we're back to our formula here. Um, in this case, you know, the change in potential energy is, is written out as Q times VBA, right? So um, we know the charge on the electron, and we know that the voltage uh, difference is given as positive 5,000 volts. And so we simply can multiply those two things together. Um, that also implies something that it, I don't think is stated here. It implies that voltage is also equal to ED. Okay, remember, change in potential energy is equal to negative QED, all right? So that would imply that voltage is equal to E times D, all right? And if you think about that, what's E? We said E is measured in newtons per coulomb. What's D? That's in meters. What do you get if you multiply newtons per coulomb times meters? You get newton meters on top, and you get coulombs on the bottom. A newton meter, if you recall, is a joule. It works, joule per coulomb. So this is another formula to have written down for voltage, the electric field times the distance, right? Uh, the potential energy lost by the electron becomes kinetic energy, as I was saying before. And so uh, here, when they want you to find the speed of the electron, right, as a result of this acceleration, what you want to do is you want to take the, the change in the kinetic energy is equal to negative of the change in the potential energy. So we go back and say, well, how much potential energy uh, difference was there? Okay, negative 8 times 10 to the negative 16. That is how much energy um, the electron gained. <coughs> And so we want to know, all right, if it gained that much uh, energy, how fast is it going? Well, that's just using 1 half mv squared. Right? Remember, we've done that before when we were studying energy. So you can say that the energy, the kinetic energy that it gains, is equal to that number. And so uh, you can solve through and find v using the mass of the electron and solve through for v. And that, that calculation is done for you down here. All right, well, so we're talking about the motion of electric charges, and that is what we call current. Okay, another thing you've probably heard of, electric current. So whenever electric charges of like signs move, an electric current is said to exist. Current is the rate at which charge flows through a given surface. Okay, so this current has to do with time. So I is the letter used to stand for current, and um, it's equal to how much charge moves divided by how much time it takes. So you can see that an, um, current is measured in coulombs per second, charge divided by time. 
A coulomb per second is called an ampere, or just an amp for short. So one ampere is equal to one coulomb per second. And so coulomb is a bunch of charge, right? A bunch of electrons or whatever, a bunch of charge. And they're all moving along through a wire. And what we're saying is an amp is uh, one coulomb of those electrons, that much charge, moving past in one second. The direction of current is the direction that positive charge would flow, and this is called conventional current. Um, when they first started developing electricity, they didn't have as well-developed uh, you know, a model of an atom as we do, so they assumed that the charges were positive, and so they, they, you know, they talked about positive charges moving through the wire. We know actually it's negative charges that move through the wire, it's electrons that move, so the direction of positive particles would be the opposite direction of negative particles. We'll see more about that when we do DC circuits. All right, so the amount of charge that passes through the filament of a certain light bulb in two seconds is 1.67 coulombs. Find the average current in the light bulb. Well, this is just using the definition of current. We said current is equal to the amount of charge that passes divided by how much time it takes to pass. All right, so 1.67 coulombs passed by uh, in two seconds. Okay, so, you know, you have a wire here. They talk about pass by. Imagine you pick a point in this wire, just right here, point A, and you sit and you watch point A. What we're talking about is how many coulombs of electrons, electrons pass by point A. That's what we mean. So they're saying that 1.6 coulombs of electrons zoop, pass by point A in two seconds. And that's the definition we're using for current. Charge divided by time. Part B, we want the number of electrons that pass through the filament in five seconds. Right? Well... The number of electrons that pass by, if you think about this, you just found the amps is 0.835. That means 0.835 coulombs pass by in one second. So how many electrons would that be? Well, uh, the charge um, on an electron, as we've seen before, is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. So what you want to do is you want to divide 0.835 divided by the charge on one electron, right? And that'll tell you how many electrons you have. So remember, an amp is a coulomb per second, right? So we just said that 0.835 coulombs per second are passing by. If we multiply it times five seconds, right, then we'll cancel out the seconds and we'll see how many coulombs have passed by. So 0.835 coulombs are passing by every second. Multiply that times five, that tells you how many coulombs pass by in five seconds. So now you know how many coulombs of charge pass by. If you want to know how many electrons that is, you divide by the charge of one electron, and you'll see how many electrons pass by. All right, try this. We we'll finish up talking about drift speed. So what's really happening inside the wire? Okay, well, electrons are not moving in straight lines inside the wire because there's all kinds of things that they bump into along the wire. So what's really happening looks more like, uh, where's my pen? Looks more like this, okay? They hit something, they bounce, they hit something, they bounce, they hit something, they bounce. But as time passes, they're making their way down the line and they're moving, okay? So this is called the drift speed. Okay, so it's not like, it's not the speed, if you follow the electrons, they're, they're moving real fast. I mean, they're banging all over the place, moving fast. But the drift speed is just the speed that they're getting as they move down the line. If you were just to follow it and see how far to the right it moves in a second, then that would be the drift speed or the drift velocity. Okay, but it's not what's actually happening inside the, the atoms. I mean, they're bouncing all over the place. Uh, let's see. All right, so the drift speed is much smaller than the average speed between filaments. Again, as I said, the electrons are bouncing all over real fast, but they're not making progress. You know, the drift speed is the progress that they're actually making down through the wire. Um, so although the drift speed is, is in the order of 10 to the negative fourth meters per second, all right, so think about that, 10 to the negative fourth meters per second. That's one over uh, one with four zeros. 
That's one ten thousandth of a meter per second. That's how fast the electrons are traveling through the wire. That is incredibly slow. Like if you were to sit and watch an electron every second, the distance that it goes is ridiculously small. But the electric field, remember the electric field is the thing that pushes the electrons. It's the thing that's, that's, that's making them move. That is felt incredibly fast, the one with eight zeros. So that's 100 million meters per second. Now that's not the motion of a particle, that's the motion of the field. So you know, you have a wire, you know, and there's electrons sitting in the wire. Let's say there's a light switch at this end, and you flip the light switch on. Okay, so the electrons start moving through the wire really slow. But when you flip that light switch on, the effect of the field in the wire was felt instantaneously. You know, at 100,000, 100 million meters per second, you know, down the line it was felt. So electric field travels fast. Okay, so um, a device you'll be using uh, in your lab, an ammeter, is a device for measuring how many amps are present in a wire. And a voltmeter is a device for measuring how many volts. It's actually the same device, you just have to turn the switch so that it operates differently. But we're going to be using those. Um, and an ammeter has to be uh, in line with the elements, we call these elements, uh, things in a circle, has to be in the straight line with the element so that all the electrons that pass through the element, like the bulb, also go through the ammeter. Okay? And we'll talk more about that when we talk about DC circuits. I think we've finally gotten to the end of lesson one.